Corporate finance practice problem using one note. Bond refunding decision problem number one. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, Practice Problems tab, then down in the 1627 Bond Refunding Decision Problem Number 1 tab. Also note when using OneNote, look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our Practice Problems will be down in the text area as well. Same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or or red in them. Closing the icon, we're going to have our information on the left, going through the calculations in the blue area on the right, doing our bond refunding type of decision. So information, we have the bond obligation currently outstanding. We're saying the 20 million. We issued at a rate of the 14% originally. The current rate is on the market is 12%. So we're thinking that we might be able to refund them and it might be a beneficial step for us to do so. So that would be basically calling back the prior bonds and then issuing them hopefully at the lower amount so they would be less costly to us. So the, they were originally issued for 20 years, the years that are still remaining, 10. So we issued, in other words, the 20 million worth of bonds at the 14% for 20 years and that was done 10 years ago meaning we still have 10 years remaining now if we were to basically refund these we might say okay and then what if i called those back and reissued the new uh 20 million dollar bonds at the 10 percent that's going to be the the idea or what should we do should we do either one it's kind of like a capital budgeting type of decision where we're doing a net present value type of calculation to determine whether it would be smart to do so. So the new issue for 10 years then would be covering the same amount of years that would still be covered for the prior bonds. And then the call premium on the old bonds, meaning what does it cost for us to call back the old bonds? We're going to say it's 8% to call back the bonds, underwriting costs on the new issuance. So to issue the new bonds, just basically you can think about it as like the administrative costs to issue are going to be the 550. Now these underwriting costs are going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to assume that we have to pay the underwriting costs at that point in time. So cash flow in this case will go out if we were to make the decisions to do the refunding. But for taxes, we're, we're going to assume that we have to amortize that over the life of the bonds. And therefore the tax impact is going to be a little bit more complicated given the fact that we're going to have that tax implication that's going to be kind of like a depreciation kind of concept, right? That we're going to accrue a cruel concept to allocate the costs over the life of the bonds. The underwriting costs on the old issue, we're saying are the 430000 Again, we already paid that 430000 so that's not relevant to this decision-making process right now, particularly because it's a sunk cost that already happened. But there's a tax impact related to that because once again, for taxes, we get to take that 430000 over the life of the bonds, which were issued 10 years ago. 10 years of that issuance then have not yet been realized with regards to taxes. If we were to call back the bonds, then you would think we would get the full tax impact, get to basically be able to deduct the, un, the unamortized portion at that point. And if we don't call them back, then we're still going to have the tax impact, the benefit of being able to allocate the cost that we spent 10 years ago for the bonds so we'll have to take that into consideration tax rate 30 percent discount rate is going to be the nine percent so we'll start with the net cost of the call premium so we got the cost before taxes the bond obligation 20 million if it costs us eight percent for the call premium on the old issues to call them we've got then the 20 million times the eight percent or the cost before taxes, 1,600,000. 1,600,000, 1, the tax impact then is going to be one minus the, the tax rate. The tax rate we said was the 30%. So the tax impact is going to be 70%. And so we're gonna take the 1,600,000 times the 70%. That gives us the 1,120,000 for the net cost of the call premium. Now notice when we're thinking about these calculations to make the decision, we're really looking at the cost or the difference between the two decision-making promises. So this is gonna be the net cost of the call premium that we're gonna to have to pay over and above then the 20 million. But the 20 million is going to be netting out 
if we were to issue new bonds, right? We'd have to pay off the old bonds, then we'd have the call premium, the difference. We're then going to then receive funds for the new bonds, and then we'll have to take a look at the issue costs on the, and what the difference could be based on the rate that we'll have for the new bonds and the old bonds. So we're looking at that differential type of calculations because the difference between the two circumstances will tell us, you know, help us for, with the decision making process. Those are going to be the relevant factors for the decision making. Then we have the underwriting costs and tax impact. So the underwriting costs of the new issue. So just to issue the stocks, to float them, to put them out on the market is going to cost us the 550000 That's a one-time cost. So we're assuming, I mean, we're assuming that we're going to have to pay that up front to issue the stocks, the cash outflow all up front. But again, the tax impact of it, we're assuming we have to take it over the useful life and we'll take, do basically a straight line method similar to a straight line depreciation method allocating it to the life of the bonds. So we'll take the 550,000 divided by 10 years because we're issuing the new bonds at the 10 years. So the 550 divided by the 10, 55,000. Then we got to take the tax impact, this 55,000 then being the yearly impact uh, with regards to the expense. So again, the, the money that went out was the 550. But I need to look at the expense amount on a yearly basis so that we can then take a look at the impact on the taxes. So 55000 basically deduction per year for 10 years to get to that total 550 cost that we need to be able to expense over the life of this thing. And then the underwriting uh, yearly tax impact then would be the 55000 times the 30%. So that means we have a tax benefit of, of the 16.5. So we're paying all the cost up front but we only get to deduct the 55000 each year for 10 years, which results in a cash flow benefit, basically, for that deduction of 16500 per year. Now we need to present value that because that's going to be a series of, of basically benefit over the 10-year time period. So we'd use our present value calculation, which would look something like this. We'd have the rate. That's going to be our discount rate. And then we've got the number of periods. That's going to be 10 because it's 10-year life comma, the payment that we just calculated was that 16500 So the present value of the tax savings then would be 105891.35 we're estimating. So in other words, we had a cash outflow of the what 550000 tax benefit that we had to do this calculation to get to, the benefit then being the 105891.35 in terms of present value dollars. Let's look at the present value of the cash outflows then. We've got the net cost of the call premium, which we calculated up top, that $1,120,000. We then have the underwriting cost of the new issue, meaning we're going to be, have to be paying the expense of the $550,000 to float these. And then we have the present value of the tax savings, which is this one hundred five eight ninety one thirty five, which we put in as a negative. Pulling out the trusty calculator, let's just add these up for the fun of it. One one two zero 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 plus five five zero 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 plus minus one oh five eight nine one is going to give us about one million five sixty four point uh, nine point nine sixty four one oh nine. Okay, now let's look at the net annual interest savings. So we have the initial interest rate and then the current rate. So we're looking at the difference once again. We issued the original amounts for the fourteen percent, meaning that's what we're paying on the interest that's the amount on the actual bonds then the current rate is the 12 percent, so we're paying less so we're looking at the difference between the two because that's what's relevant to our decision making process that being two percent so if we take that two percent times the face amount of the of the 20 million meaning we, we could keep the whether we keep the old 20 million out there or we we uh, call back and issue the new 20 million it's still the 20 million out there and there's a difference of the two percent on that amount between the two decisions that we could make. So the 20 million times the 2% is the net annual interest savings before taxes of the 400,000. Then there's a tax impact related to that. And that's going to be the one minus the 30% or 70, 70%. So if we take the 400,000 times the 70%, we have the net annual interest savings, which is going to be the 200 and uh, 80,000, 280,000. Then we got to think about that in terms of the present value, because once again, this, uh, this 200 and 280,000 is the net annual interest savings, because obviously we're paying the difference between the 14, 12, the 
annually, we're assuming, on the bonds. So that means that this is going to be happening every year for 10 years. So we got to do our present value calculation then. So the present value will be negative present value of the rate. We're looking at that 9% discount rate, comma, number of periods. The number of periods is going to be, once again, 10 periods. And then, comma, the future value is going to be, I'm sorry, the payments is going to be that 280 the net annual interest savings, to give us the 1796944 16 Then we're going to take a look at the annual amortization of the old issue. So the old issue, meaning when we issued the first $20 million, we paid the floating cost, so that cost the expense to get those out there, of 430000 That's not relevant to the current decision-making process because it's a sunk cost. It's something that happened in the past. But what's not sunk, what will make a difference, is the tax impact, which we're assuming we had to then take over the life of the bonds. So it, whatever's unamortized at this point in time, we might be able to get the full amount if we were to retire the bonds, as opposed to if we were to keep amortizing them, we would have to take that un unamortized amount over the remaining life, which would be 10 years. So for example, underwriting costs, 430000 divided by 20 years, because that's what we originally issued them for. That means that although we paid the 430000 already back when we issued these 10 years ago, we're only getting a tax benefit yearly for 21500 each year for 20 years, which would add up to that 430000 10 years have already passed. 10 years have not. So we're assuming this straight line method here. So we got the 21500 times 10 years that have not yet passed. So it have not yet passed. Therefore, we have 215000 of unamortized cost, meaning we paid the 430000 It is deductible, but not in the year we paid it. We're assuming we have to take it over the 20 years. 10 years have passed. We consumed 10 years of it. 10 years have not passed. So this 10-year period has not been consumed yet in terms of taxes. We haven't got a tax benefit on it at this point in time. Now, if that's the case, then if we retire the bonds, then because the bonds are now retired, we might be able to take that full amount, the 215, and get the tax benefit of it today. Versus if we do not, we would continually get the 21.5 over the next 10 years. The end result in dollar amount of taxes deductions would be the same, but time value of money would result in there being a difference between the two results. So if I was to take the present value of the unamortized cost, for example, present value of the rate, which would be the 9%, comma, number of periods, which would be uh, 10 periods, comma, and then the payment, we're going to say the payment is going to be this 21.5. Then we can compare these two. That would be the, the 137,979. That means that the, the unamortized cost in terms of total dollars that we would get today if we were to retire the bonds to continue with our process would be the 215. I get to take the whole amount now. But uh, if I was not to do that, then I would have to take the 21.5 over the next 10 years. And if we present value that, then that's where we're getting this difference of the 137,979.60. So let's take a look at the difference then. We'll call it the gain in unamortized cost of old issues. So if we have the unamortized cost of the 215,000, which we would get at this point in time, if we were to retire the bonds and then send out the new bonds versus the present value of the unamortized costs, which is what we discounted, assuming we don't make the decision to retire the bonds and would have to then take the, the deduction over the next 10 years. The difference is 77, 20, uh, 36. If we multiply that times the tax rate of the 30%, then we're saying that there's a cost tax savings of 23,106,11. 23,106,11. So if we add these up, we got the present value of the interest, 1,796,944,16, which we calculated up top here. And then we have the cost of the tax savings, 23,106,11. And that's going to add up to the 26. So comparing these out then, if we take a look at the present value of the cash outflows, 1,564,108, which was here in the present value of the cash outflows, where we had the 1,564,109 without the pennies, so it's rounded there. 
And then obviously the pennies, I'm not sure that's going to help our decision making process much. But in any case, the present value of the cash outflows is going to be that 1820502026 we calculated just up top. Taking the difference between the two, we have the 255941.62. It's a positive number, and we're talking about the net present value calculation. So there, therefore, it might be something worthwhile. It might be a decision-making process that we might then do.